the next thing we will want to do is add in our beams. So to do that, we come to Beam Layout and to Superstructure. Because again, it'll set, you want to set the start line and the end line. And accept. And you do all that by just left clicking. All right. And it just it checks what the alignment is. And it says Geometry Baseline 3. And the reason why it's Geometry Baseline 3 is because um, earlier in the tutorial videos, I was drawing different examples and deleted them and then redrew different things. And I did that three times. So it just set it to Geometry Baseline 3 because I deleted Geometry Baseline 1 and 2 because I those were just examples and I ended up not using them. Anyway, um, and I could technically change the name here, but that would mess up everything else. And it's not super important. Just as long as you're select on the right alignment, it's all good. This is more of just a check, just make sure you're on the right alignment. Um, I'm using simple. You can also change it to continuous though. All right, and first thing we want to do is we we'll want to change the number of beams to match what we have in our plans. And we have six beams in our plan. So, all right, up to six beams. And edge distance is how far out the, it's basically this outside spacing here. Because right now it automatically sets the beam spacing to being equal. Right now it has the beams at the very edge. So that'd be equivalent to having the beams right here at the edge, center line, which is, they're not. They're 850 millimeters in. So we'll just need to change that to 0 0.85. It's equal. And then that just applies that and that removes those errors. And just double check to make sure those spacings are right. And they are, it's 2,180 millimeters, which matches that in terms of meters. Now we're going along and defining this, um, you can click the validate button to draw in the girders down here. So you can kind of see where they're at and just make sure it looks right. Um, you can also, if it's the same on both sides, you can do set all to default and it'll set the other support lines to match the first support line. They're going to be a little bit different for this bridge, so I'm not going to set them all to default, which means I'll have to come in here and draw them for the second span a little later. Um, what's a little bit different is this offset. So right now, um, the beams are set to go all the way to the edge, um, but it turns out that there's usually a little bit of a gap between the beam the end and the edge of the span. We'll want to go reference our bridge plans to find the offset. So, pulling over the bridge plans, we see that here at the center of the pier, there is 188 typical space between the girder ends. You also see they got a little bit of a slant to them. Anyway, so what we can do to do that is just offset right there. I'll change that to 88. Apply it off. Skew ends. Click validate. That sets it off just a little bit there and there. However, that applies the same offset to both ends. And in lots of cases, this might do the job just fine. In this case, though, have to look at the total beam length. Right here we got 31.532. Uh, if we go over to the bridge plans, we find that the out to out is 31.1 and that's after pre-stressing. So we want to adjust this a little bit, so it's like that, but that means they're not gonna have the same start to end value. So we just unclick that. And then over here, we'll just wanna change this offset to 
Negative. Ah, do math in my head. Let's see, I believe that'd be negative 620. Do validate. Oh, and doing the validate, see, I apply that to the wrong end. Whoops. Okay, so that will actually want that to be 188. And this one to be 20. Oh. All right. All right. So I reviewed my math a little bit and realized I made a few mistakes. So I'll be correcting those right now. Um, so I was going through, I realized I did this 188, but that's from beam end to beam end, not from the center line bearing. So this actually needs to be 94. So I'll change that to 94. And this over here, this should be close to 244. Um, and something you can do to check is on the right side there's this beam length. Right now it's not auto updating, but that's because there's an air throwing up here on support line two, so it won't update. Uh, but if I set all to default, it will update the beam length. Um, and that will help you get a better idea if you're doing something right. Um, and it looks like I didn't quite do something right. Um, okay, so, um, all right, I see what I'm doing. So what I need to do is, okay, let me pull up my calculator because doing things in my head is not working out quite right. Okay, so I have 188 divided by two equals 94, that's correct. And I want my beam length to be, um, you just reference the bridge plans, but I want them to be 31.1. So I just need to adjust this. Um, so I got the 94, so I just need to add an additional six millimeters. So from that 344 I have entered right now, minus six would be 338, I believe. 338 tab. And yep, there. That's the beam like they want. 31.1 meters. Okay. So, as like I was showing earlier, this beam length wasn't updating us when any errors were being thrown. Um, so, I joined these set to default so I could just see that. Um, but now I'm going to unlink that um, because I need these to be set slightly different. Uh, I guess I'll set those back together just so I can show you why. Um, you can click validate to kind of take a look at what you're doing. Um, right here, I have that on that side. The reason why is because it copies, if I set them to default, it just picks it up and moves it over to the second span. Um, and I want it to be like mirrored around this uh, center support line, not just copied straight over. So I will have to define them separately. So I'll just come in here, support line two, set that to six. And it will just basically be the opposite. So I will have this as 94. I have this set to negative 344. I believe that's right. Uh, I can always check by like just clicking validate. And oh, hey, oops, I clicked that one too many times. Just down. Oh yeah, and you set the edge distance to 0 0.85, apply, validate, alright, there, that's looking better. Alright, so once those are all in place, remember to check the beam length, and oh, it looks like I made a mistake, so it looks like I carried over the same mistake I made earlier. So I just need to update this to 38, I believe is what it was. And it's being a little finicky about updating that, so I guess I update that side too. All right, there. Beam length is now at 31.1, which is what I'm expecting. So um, I can validate. Um, the difference of a few millimeters, I'm not going to notice with just looking at it, which is why it's good to check this beam length um, just to make sure everything looks good. And then just click Save. And then they're all in there. 
And the next part is to add in the beams. And to do that, just come up here to the place beam under superstructure. And just beam group is a good enough name for me. I just select the beam layout. I left click again to accept. And this opens up. And it automatically has applied all beams selected as the default when you first open up beam de de definition. Um, default beam type is fine by me for the concrete. Now the first thing I want to do is define the haunch. And to do that, I just need to come over to the bridge plans real quick. And just look at the bridge plans. Uh, if we'll, you remember the deck was 205. It's here at the center lines. 255. Um, so I'll be doing 50 millimeters. And there's a place where you can do like compute, enter, and like max clearance, minimum clearance in the camber. I'm not doing that. I'm just going to be doing the 50 millimeters. And then down here, most of these are just set based on the other things you defined. I can select the girder start template. Um, I can go over defining templates in a later video, but for here, uh, I just know from the bridge plans they used Ashto Type 4. I'll just use the default material they have in here, Ashto 2. I can change that later if I need to, though. Alright, so I just click OK, and it will go ahead and draw all those beams in. Boom. All right, and then just you can look over here to take a quick look. Um, just make sure everything looks reasonable. If you see any weird gaps or anything, or something just looks out of place, um, just do a, you know a good gut check. Just to make sure it all looks okay. And if something does look wrong, you can change it by just once again coming and selecting it. And you can either hover over it until this pops up, and you can click on properties, and then come over here, click on these three dots to select edit. And if you do open up again, something important to note is that if you come into edit, it does not have applied all beams selected by default. That's only selected by default when you first define the beams. So if you make a change and you want to apply to all of them, you have to make sure to come down here and select apply to all beams. I'm just going to cancel that. Alright, so look at that, that's good. So the next part would be adding in the, the piers and the abutments. I'll go over that in the next video segment.